go on to uh, another invention this past year was a pattern I call the greater water floatman. Um, and it's called that way because I have a, a water boat, a water floatman that imitates boatman. So the English call back swimmers greater boatman. So I thought, eh, okay. Because I don't usually name things fills this or this or that because I don't know why I just don't. So I'm tying the fly upside down and it's pretty darn simple. Just use olive uh, thread or black, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get that in, change my thread, change my thread, and just You could weight the front part. Uh, no, because I use foam on this, so I don't weight it. <laughs> It'll be counterproductive, you dumbass. So, think before you talk. Typical male problem, foot and mouth disease. All right, so the first part we're going to do, and it's no particular order. You can put the legs on first. I tend to, to put the shell back on first because the legs dangle and sort of get everywhere for the least amount of time they're interfering. So, Apparently, according to Rick, this is a bit of a collector's item now. So this is the white booby foam, but you could use two, three millimeter sheet foam. What I like doing with the booby foam, either black or the white, and I use the white for the back swimmers, which is what this imitates, and the black, the smaller black, for the um, back swimmers. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my bigger scissors. I'm just going to take and square that off. So. And I'm just going to take and try as best that I can to make one, one cut north-south. And then I'm going to trim one end to a point. So one of my favorite patterns for boatmen and back swimmers is an ultimate boatman, but it's a, it's a fussy pattern. Though I simplified it a bit because I, I used to find I cut more foam bodies in half than I actually tied flies. If any of you have ever tied that fly, cutting them. And so what I do now to tie my ultimate boatman is I'll dress the hook with thread, put the, put the legs on the underside of the shank, I'll tie it upside down like this, and then I'll put a fine, fine, super fine, like chronomid thin, coating of dubbing right the way up the shank. And then I will take my foam body and I'll color it, olive on the bottom, do my markings on the back, and I'll take the gel type super glue, gel tight Loctite and I'll just put that on because it doesn't flow like the brushable stuff and I'll glue that body right on top and then I'll put another dab of glue where the legs are and just hold them for like a five or ten count and that'll hold the legs in place and then I'll set that aside and let it dry and then coat it with aqua seal. No more cutting foam. That sounds like a good plan. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Bleeding all over the place at half severed bodies. Well then you cut them half and yeah. Because really the super glue is used just to, to um, and I'm just going to get my thread on a tight leash so I don't, and I'm just going to secure this right down. It's a little tricky, you've got to work it into the bend a little bit. You see how i got my thread on a nice short rope, basically just so the barrel of the bobbin is rolling around the shank, and you don't run the risk of, and I'll pull it back just to make sure, I can't see worth crap, um, but to make sure that the, thread isn't showing, not that it really matters. And then for the legs, I'm using the Chaobras green or a light olive um, stretch floss. And I'm just going to put these on, deliberately long. I'm just going to figure eight them in place, about a third back from the hook eye. And again, you can tie this fly in any real order you want. Put the legs on first, put the body on, and obviously the shell back with the legs and then tie the body in. So what I'm going to do is back swimmers at rest have their legs swept forward. So I try to tie this with the legs and swept forward position so when I strip it they're going to come back and they're going to be more naturally inclined, I think, not that I'm underwater looking at this thing, um, just, just to uh, sweep back forward and, and help. So I'm just going to take the tying thread and I'm, as I go through the uh, between the legs, I'm only going one direction here, and it starts to one wrap directly in front of the other. It's going to start. See how that leg sort of swept forward now? Yep. So now I'm going to do the same. After I've done that, I've gone through, I've gone through, I've gone through. Now I'm going to go around the shank a couple of times. That isolates those wraps on that leg. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same and go through, 
this way. I gotta be a little careful because I got and just <coughs> the far leg always tends to be a little trickier, but you can see I've kind of got a forward set in the legs now. You can jiggle them and wiggle them. And now we just gotta tie in our body material, which is the peacock green or what the hell is that? Sorry, Rick. So I'm just going to take this, use the notch in the package, comes your holder. Strip it down to the core, catch it in, so it started to secure it behind the legs and then secure it back down. And again, I can bring my thread up, <coughs> a nice short leash, pull this aside. That's right, Patterson Lake. There's no fish in that lake. Don't go there. Right. So now I just bring my tying thread up. <coughs> now all we're going to do is make one complete wrap. I always do this whenever I'm using crystal chenille. Get one complete wrap like that so it's really around. And then, like dubbing, I'm going to spin the crystal chenille. What that does is tighten the thread core that's holding the fibers and see how they stand up a little better. Now they're going to radiate out a little better and grab and reflect light. Ouch! And just go around. You can see I'm using the actual card that the... And I'm just weaving right up to the base of the legs and then sort of coming around in front. And then just weaving everything around. The only thing that's fussy about these flies is the legs. You can... I usually I trim them at the end. You can pre-trim them a little bit. And make sure this is packed good and tight right up to the hook eye. <coughs> so more scissors. I'll pull everything back. It's got a wet that hook is like some days you have good days where you can sweep all these things back and it's never a problem. And other days you're bleeding all over the place. Alright, so we got that in place and now I'm just gonna bring the shell back over. Okay? And I'm gonna you can probably use a better bet to use 6 aught, but if you forget it, like I did, because you're busy looking for your glasses, because you couldn't remember where you put them, you found them in a the truck. I'm just pulling that over. So with 8 aught, you've got to be careful, because it's cut. very fine. It can cut. So I use compression wraps, tight, tighter, tightest. 6 aught is a wider thread. It lays flatter. It's a lot more forgiving. If I just come in super quick and tight on this, I can have problems. Now I'm just going to take this, I'm not trimming off that excess because I'm going to use that to form the head. So we'll just hold that back out of the way and just like an Elkhair caddis. Most oh, you're missing. I know. <laughs> there we go. Rough night tonight. What's that foam called, Phil? It's called booby body foam, but you could use any, you know, craft foam. Uh, the only reason I like it is it's got that nice, when cutting it in half, you got that nice rounded look, mm -hmm. just like the natural back swimmers have. You know, and now what we're going to do is come in with our scissors, and right over the hook eye, I'm going to trim. Okay, and then I'm going to take the corners off. Yeah. Okay, and then the legs. And trim. About... Half the shank, and I'm not stretching on them. I've just gathered them, because if you trim in a stretched position, you're going to end up with little stubby legs, and your back swimmer will be a little crippled. But you can see how I got that. It's got the forward <coughs> swept, and just by jiggling them around, and that one's slightly longer. Fish can tell that. So. And now you get to color markers. So. Take a Sharpie, the black one. Well, actually, you can take, this is the spring green. And you don't have to spill head cement on it, but it helps. <laughs> and I'm just going to color. I always do the lighter color first. So I'm just going to dab that to imitate the... Just get that in there. I'm using the wide tip. You could probably use the narrow, but I just want it to fill in 
this as best it can. You can be somewhat liberal and almost blot it in to let it fill up the pores. So that's going to kick a little bit and die. Now we'll do the dark stuff. And you can buy these Sharpies that have the narrow end and the fat end. So I'm just going to do, just like in a boat, on the Ultimate Boatman, just come across. Get the one that's dried up. I always buy two. That's why they come in pairs, I guess. That's why you bring a third as a backup. And I got a fourth in there. Oh, look, black. <laughs> So I'm just, I've just gone across here, and you don't have to be perfect, but you, the best you can, try to draw a straight line down the back, and I just come in and I kind of fill in this like a wine glass, and, and then you can put markings, I just go with a couple of slashes, All right, oh, there's room for a third, so. And I might do a couple of coats on this, but just for demo purposes, I'll leave them because it'll absorb a little bit of it in, and then you can go back and coat it over again. And then you got to give them their characteristic red eyes. <laughs> it's been a running joke. To Peter. I have back swimmers in my aquariums. I've got pictures of them. And I'm just dabbing the corner. Got a picture of you from the seminar with red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it only happens on full moons. And there you go. It's simple. It floats. It actually still fishes moderate. You know, tends to f float up a little bit this. Um, sorry, this way. And that's how the back swimmers will move, right? Because from below they'll blend in with the reflections of the surface. From above, they're dark. So their predators from above can't see them, and if you want to get really fancy, you can come in and actually trim some of the fibers flush. So this fly actually worked well for me at Dahlberg this year. That day I bumped into UTAC. I can't spin deer hair like you. I don't have patience anymore. <laughs> I love tax back swimmer patterns, but I'm a simple foam guy. <laughs> And it worked well in the parklands this year, too. So typically I'd have this on uh, and either in front of it or behind it um, a uh, water floatman with the pearl body and the black back. Because uh, I find sometimes I'll feed on the back swimmers, sometimes I'll feed on the boatman, sometimes I'll go an hour on one and an hour on the other. I figure give them both. <laughs> I can argue about it later. And that, that one's worked uh, really well for me this year.